Tonto National Forest is northeast of Phoenix, Arizona and is the seventh largest national forest in the United States at almost 3 million acres. It was created in 1905 primarily to protect watersheds around its six reservoirs, its arid desert gradients to tall pines. It was originally colonized by natives over a thousand years ago. But the place sucks. Don't go there. After 19 hours of driving split with the truck stop siesta, our tires touched dirt. That kicked off a week in Tonto National Forest, a desert. <laughs> to ensure we maximized the gear burden on our trucks, we decided to spend a week camping, mountain biking, and off-roading while being completely off-grid. It's only more stuff to bring, and it's why we bought trucks, to bring more gear. Our threesome, not to be confused with a menage a trois, was comprised of my Gladiator Rubicon, a Chevy Bison ZR2, towing an anchor, and a clean GMC Canyon AT4. The forest road to our campsite had a trailer gatekeeper. Either the trailer jack would hit the tailgate, the trailer spare would drag on the ground, or the trailer frame would drag on the ground. We had to remove parts of the trailer to get it up the trail. Well, they did. I was busy holding the camera. Uh, hey, Ilya, stop. Your, um, the cables and wiring your propane tank are in the ground. Yeah. Scott, are those, are those getting pinched? Eventually, we told okay. him to just back up and send Keep it. Coming. Keep coming. Just kidding. We don't have razors. We found him a better line. Now you're watching the middle of him. Keep coming straight. Hard driver. Now hard passenger. Keeps climbing. Okay, how's he doing in the middle? This is the critical point. Hard passenger. Hard passenger. Forward. Passenger. Just drag in the rear. Drag a little bit. You're all right. Okay, you can drive straight. 50 meters up the trail was our next puzzle. Okay, Scott, I'll, I'll spot him up. If you see something in the back you don't like, yell stop, okay? And you gotta climb this ledge and straddle this V. What's he hitting? Yeah, it was just kissing it, but. Hey, how you, is this okay though? Did you want to back down and not risk this anymore? So far, I'm okay. Okay. Okay, let's get you past that so we get your fender piece out. Turn driver, come driver. Let's straddle this V. Okay, keep coming. Now start turning passenger a little bit forward. Straight, come straight before you turn. The front tire was in the air because flex, which pressed down on the back. Stop, 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 stop. You're gonna tear that to shit. That, the weight of his gear and trailer pushed his tire into his fender. So the plan is we're gonna go scout ahead with the Gladiator and if the campsite's worth it, we're gonna go back, drop his camper, hook it up to my truck and then tow it up the hill so we don't mess up his because when we tested his truck out earlier, he didn't have the weight of the trailer or all the camping gear in the back to weigh it down. Feeling cocky, I told Ilya, the driver of the ZR2, I'll drive his camper up the trail and for him to yell at me if his trailer was about to do something he didn't like. In a feat of stupid engineering, Nobo, the maker of the camper, put the spare tire in a precarious spot that quickly contacted the ground. It's an example of form over function and it's moronic. <coughs> The clean canyon made the trek next. Because he had an RTT, this was the only off-roading he was able to do on four tires. His tent was a wreck the whole week. But that doesn't matter. He bought this truck to take him to campsites difficult to reach, and it did that job flawlessly. The Gladiator in four low is a brute. Gobs of torque. I hardly noticed the camper or gear in the back, even on 35s going uphill. The eight-speed auto and four tens are a winning combination. The last obstacle before camp, the Gladiator's nemesis, a high breakover. You're not, you're not gonna touch this time. Oh, look at that angle. Hold on, slow, real slow. Yep, you're clear. Nope, we're not clear. That damn spare tire, we should have removed it earlier but that's on us for being lazy. However, we shouldn't have to remove it to begin with. To clear the breakover, we had to raise up the tires of the camper. 
I had Max tracks in my bed that would have been great for this, but I did a crap job packing and I couldn't get to them without completely unloading, so we made a rock bridge instead. My mountain bike is an Octane 1 hardtail. It's simple, light, and strong. Our campsite was perched atop a hill overlooking a valley which encapsulated Horseshoe Reservoir. <laughs> and there's Ilya taking a piss. <laughs> I don't think he realized this is 4K. I can see his little pecker. <laughs> See? Crappy packing. I need to be a better organizer. And bring less stuff. I feel like you bring too much stuff. This is an Oztent RV5 and it's almost full. Got my King Guana Cot there, solar panel. Got my mountain bike, size XL. Fridge under a blanket. Uh, assorted cases. All my stuff for a week of camping, grilling, mountain biking hiking, and just general shenanigans. Still, got to cut back. I haven't brought four pairs of shoes. There's three there, plus the ones I have on. What the heck? Way too much stuff. On this trip, I tested using a solar panel and battery pack to power my fridge. I have a 120 watt panel and 230 watt hour battery. In full sun and perfect conditions, I'd have enough power to charge the battery and run the fridge for 24 hours. Luckily, it was overcast most of the week and I bought a cheap, inefficient panel. After a night so windy my tent went Mary Poppins on me, we started exploring. Make no mistake, the ZR2 is an excellent truck. On flatter ground, it'll spank the Gladiator, whereas the JT is better suited for rough trails. Both have their place. Tuning his bump stop and flares are only minor tweaks. By now, I've had the Gladiator for five months, and I'm starting to get a feel for the suspension. For being stock, the articulation is superb, and it gets around like a mountain goat. I wouldn't mind upgrading the shocks to cut down on sway when hitting sudden dips in the trail, but that's a quibble. This thing is awesome. On this trip, I did an arm and leg workout on the trail. I used resistance bands and a trasheroo. The workouts were surprisingly effective and mimicked my garage gym workouts. 
I've been training at home for a year because of COVID. That versatility taught me I have no excuse not to train while on the trail. Twice this trip, we went to Brown's Ranch to shred the gnar. Things like this are why we traded our Jeeps for trucks, so we could include more activities on our adventures. It's much easier loading our mountain bikes into trucks than the Jeeps we used to drive. So we're camping right there, and we're biking. We took it easy, sessioning a few jumpy bits and having fun. The trails have an added danger. If you overshoot a turn, you'll end up in a cactus. That was awesome. Good job, guys. That was great. That was a good ride. Got another one. There he is. <laughs> he was pooping. <laughs> Where are they? That was cool. That second one, full on. They were, oh. I missed the second one, but oh the one flew God. right over me when I was pooping. Awesome. Any more? So Mr. Ilya here was behind his camper pooping. Yes. And a jet. I wouldn't go over there right now. 
<laughs> came right over those mountains and, and banked over us while he was pooping. That was probably the most glorious poop he's had. <laughs> Our next adventure was finding an open trail across the Verde River. Several areas and roads were closed to allow for rehabilitation after recent fires. When crossing water, go at a constant and slow speed to create a bow wave in front of your rig. That lowers water from critical components in the engine bay, including the intake and alternator. Don't power into it like a buffoon. You're a guest at water crossings. Give them respect. I was surprised at how well my Jeep sealed. You, A sippy cup would have spilled more water than what got inside. Yeah, it's, it's a little deep. One constant on my travels is trash. Intentional or not, it ends up almost everywhere. There was a ridiculous amount of trash from careless people. Even our campsite glittered with bullet casings and shells. Not able to find our way across the river, we doubled back and followed the road past our campsite. And the pinstriping started right away. The deeper we went, the more vegetation encroached on the trail and left its mark on our trucks. Fuck. Hey, Jesus Christ. Ah. The drive was not difficult and could be done in most four-wheel drive rigs when dry. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. 
At only five months old, my truck is still in pristine condition. I've learned to take excellent care of my Jeep, so it'll take care of me. Our evenings were spent playing kitchen and annoying whoever was downwind with our flatulence. The resulting feasts were fantastic. Bacon, steak, pot roast, chicken and rice. We ate like we were famous YouTube overlanders. We three agreed the next trip would be minimalist and see how little we can get by with. Each of us overpacked this trip. <laughs> I assumed I'd be eating my typical four meals a day, when in reality, I ate less than half what I brought. Food, clothes, kitchen gadgets, shoes. We each identified areas we could reduce. We could have easily doubled our stay and thrived because of how much we brought. It was time to go home. After a short and stormy night, we were up before the sun, which was still tucked in with a blanket of clouds. Once again, the gladiator was conscripted to deliver the camper to flatter ground. This experience reaffirmed yeah. for me that campers, while they increase comfort and make for great Instagram posts, aren't worth the hassle or expense to me, considering the types of trips I do. They have their place, but it's not willfully hitched to the back of my rig. See you at the next spot. Personally, this trip was an extreme in regard to the amount of stuff I brought. From over a decade of off-road trips, I've concluded the more I bring, the more I fiddle with. Sure, it's fun playing with camping gadgets, but that can quickly subtract from an enjoyable experience. I do not like devoting so much time looking down and in, maintaining and organizing gear. I'd rather be looking up and out enjoying the scenery thanks to a simpler kit. I think social media made overpacking acceptable. Influencers peddle gear they likely would not have purchased outright because they got it for free from sponsors. The average Joe buys into it because they want to be like the cool kids, even if they don't need it. Overlanding and overloading have become synonymous. It's over the top, overdone, and I am over it. My dedication to a personal edict eroded and it's time I rebuild that foundation. Early on, I decided to pack for my trips like I'm backpacking, be light and nimble, and only bring what's necessary. That philosophy is easier on me, the rig, and the pocketbook. To me, less is more appealing. Back up a little. It's completely sitting on the tongue. Yeah, like the entire tongue. Yeah, much better. And actually, just kind of keep it straight with the can. Okay, real slow. You are, I think you're all right. So far, no, the spare tire is going to rub like crazy. Yeah. Yep, spare tire is going to go. By the way, we finally wisened up and removed the spare tire. No, driver. Not bad so far, not bad. Go 
To you, the viewer, thank you for stopping by and making it this far. I'll gladly answer your questions on our trip in the comments, and I look forward to reading how you reduce your gear. Thanks for watching. See you on the trail.